This tool is called the JPS Worm Maker or Virus Maker. When we pop this open you can see that it has some default options such as disabling the registry, disabling certain tools such as Notepad, disabling DHCP, and desktop icons, and even modifying the mouse behavior. And as I mentioned before, I would classify most of these as annoyances rather than serious viral behavior, and that's fine because we're using this for educational purposes. You can do some fiendish things like hide the cursor, but where this really emulates true viral behavior is at the bottom you can see it says name after install and it will give it a name that is a name of a system executable like run dll32 or sender.exe. So regardless of what options we choose here, we can also choose to restart the machine. We'll go over to the next page and you could do some more impactful things like change the actual password of the system. And you can run a custom command. And that's where it gets really interesting because you could have this machine connect to maybe via Netcat or FTP or SSH, depending on what's installed, connect to a command and control system. And in that sense, it might even function somewhat like a Trojan. And we can make this actually function like a worm as well by having it copy itself. You can choose what type of icon and emulation from a file name perspective that you'll use. And notice that these are all names of system processes. So from a layman's perspective, an end user is not necessarily going to notice what these processes are or what they're doing. Well, they might notice what they're doing, but they won't notice them by name. So it's been created, and it creates itself in the same folder as the executable by default. So let's go ahead and find the executable. I have it in my shared documents folder. I'll open the share folder, and I have a folder called malware kits. Let's go ahead and go into the virus maker folder, and there's the JPS virus maker. And in that same folder, you'll see that there are several fake JPEGs. Now, the one we just created was the spool SV. And when I run that, you'll notice that it's about to disable the clock. Double click, notice that the clock has been disabled. Now, that's very fiendish, but not necessarily practical from a viral perspective. But I didn't want to bring the machine down. I wanted you to see how this works. And notice it copied itself. So in that sense, it's been configured to function as a worm as well. And so these toolkits, by providing some base functionality and hooks for custom code, can be used to create genuinely malicious malware. And here you can see it's actually rebooting the system on its own.